So I went to the dentist today and I found out that I have three, maybe four cavities to be filled before I go to school, so that's fun. Hello, internet. Um, if you're watching this, I did decide to edit and post it, so I moved a step in the right direction. I'm making this because I have always wanted to make YouTube and video content, but every time I tried to do it in the past, I wasn't very passionate about what I was making, and I was making like vlogs and beauty channel stuff. Um, and I realized that once I got into medical school and people started asking me what I did and how I managed to get in and what I did in my educational career in order to build up to getting into medical school, I thought that maybe I could share this with a wider audience or point people toward this video if they decided to ask me, so I wrote some notes on my iPad about what I did to get into medical school and I'm going to go through them. Oh, another thing is, so my first application, I applied to 14 schools and I was waitlisted to one and rejected from the other 13. And then so on my second application, I applied to 21 different schools, I was waitlisted to one, accepted to one and denied the other 19 schools. So obviously the acceptance rate is really, really tough. So in terms of my pre-med prerequisites, um, I was a biology major and at my school, all the pre-med prerequisites that you need were covered by the biology major. Um, I also decided to take a psych minor because I actually had happened to take all the classes that I needed to get a psych minor because I enjoyed psychology. Um, so obviously all the courses required can be checked on the school websites um, to the schools that you're applying to, but you know, generally you need two semesters of biology with lab, two semesters of gen chem with lab, two semesters of orgo with lab, two semesters of physics with lab, two writing courses, and they also recommend anatomy, psychology, and biochemistry. And biochemistry in particular is a, was a really important one for me. Hi, I'm back momentarily because I forgot to mention the reason why um, taking biochemistry was extremely important for my application was because you can use your biochemistry grade to replace your organic chemistry 2 grade at some institutions. So I didn't do so well in organic chemistry 2, but because I got an A in biochemistry, they overlooked that grade. I'm 50-50 on whether or not I recommend taking your AP courses that you received credit for and using those towards your pre-med prerequisites. Um, some schools don't take them, and I would say that a high school AP course is not going to really be equivalent to a college course, especially in the pace, because a high school AP course gives you all the information in an entire year, whereas you only have one semester. What I recommend is retaking those courses that you've already received credit for and just using those to get an easy A, easy A and boost your GPA as much as possible because when you get into those upper level courses, it might not be as easy. Unfortunately, I did the opposite. Um, I didn't do well in those courses that I took because I skipped my AP courses. And then I ended up having to make up for it later in courses that were a lot harder to get A's in. The only other thing I wanna to touch on is that uh, I did have time in my pre-med track to take electives and I did take some electives that weren't necessarily useful for medical school but that I wanted to take for myself like computer science. Um, if you wanted to do an unconventional major I think it's absolutely possible but I would highly highly recommend talking with your major advisor and especially your pre-med advisor on how you can fit those prerequisites into your existing major to help you plan so that you don't have to struggle with it later. So the next section is volunteering. I basically have some summer volunteering experience in nursing homes and experience with my church. 
I really love working with old people, so that's <laughs> most of what my volunteering was. Um, but I would say don't just volunteer for the sake of volunteering. And this is another thing that I kind of did in my volunteer experience. I just volunteered because I felt like I had to. And obviously you do have to, but I would recommend finding something that speaks to you specifically and your journey to getting into medical school. Um, if art is your hobby, look into art enrichment programs. For example, um, when I was younger, I had a lot of health problems, chronic health problems, and they weren't so bad that I needed to be hospitalized, but the hospital near where I was living had this art enrichment program that worked with children in the children's hospital. So I signed up to do that. Unfortunately, by the time I got into medical school, um, I couldn't do it anymore because it needs to be a six month commitment or more. But it spoke to my journey as a person who had medical issues as a child. And so that volunteer experience would mean more to me than just random volunteering at a soup kitchen, which isn't bad by any means, but um, that's something that I think they look for is how does your volunteer experience relate back to your overall journey. In terms of shadowing, I was pretty lucky. Um, my parents are both doctors and they're both big doctors in the community, so I had a lot of connections and we were able to reach out to a bunch of different specialties that I was interested in and some that I thought hmm, maybe I don't know if I'm interested in this but I would like to learn. Um, I think the recommendation is 150 to 200 hours of shadowing, which sounds like a lot, but if you break that down, it's really only, let's see, I did the math, five weeks of total time spent. So if you did one week per month for two summers, you'd already be at your recommended shadowing hours. So the next section is the MCAT, and I don't have a lot in this section because I think it kind of deserves its own video um, that I may make in the future if anybody is interested or if I feel like it. Um, but here's what I have to say. Um, if you can afford to, don't be afraid to take it two or three times or to take a prep course of some kind. So I took the MCAT three times. The first time I just bought the Kaplan MCAT prep books and I just used the books. Um, and I really didn't prepare enough for that one. I didn't give myself enough time. And so I didn't do very well. So I ended up taking it a second time, again, with just the books and other online resources that I found that I could use. Um, and I did significantly better, but still not as good as I really wanted to do. For my last attempt at the MCAT, I decided to enroll in a one month Princeton Review course. So I used the Princeton Review physical materials and also the one month course. Um, if I had to go back, I probably would not recommend the one month course, but I absolutely recommend Princeton Review. They were amazing. The teachers were awesome. It's just that one month, basically eight hours a day, every day except one day a week, was a lot and they crammed a lot of information in there and so it didn't give you a lot of time to do practice problems and practice exams. Luckily I had done some of these already leading up to my other exams and leading up to this exam, but I would probably recommend one of the longer length Princeton Review courses if you're going to go with Princeton Review or Kaplan or something like that. So um, for letters of recommendation, um, a lot of people will ask me, well, how do you establish a relationship with a professor? I feel like I don't really know them and I feel like there's not a lot of opportunity to get to know them. So I have a couple tips on how to get to know your professors and get good letters of recommendation. So my first tip is to sit in the front of the class, no matter what. And I didn't do this in the beginning and I learned later on that this was actually a really good idea. I sat in the front of the class after a while and I answered tons of questions and I would always go to review sessions or office hours. Even if I didn't have any questions personally, if other people had questions, I was there to listen to those questions and also contribute to the discussion. This will benefit your grades and your relationships with your professors because your professors will see you as a dedicated student, but they also will see you more frequently than just twice a week if your class is twice a week. Eventually, you'll find professors that you just click with. I actually liked a professor so much that I 
went on the directory, he was a psychology professor, I went on the class directory and I took every single class that he offered. And that's how I accidentally ended up getting a psych minor because I really, really enjoyed working with this professor and I actually ended up TAing for him later on and it was just something that happened naturally. I wasn't really going out of my way to try and get a letter of recommendation out, out of this person. It just happened like that. I also recommend asking early. Professors are busy, busy people and they will forget. Uh, provide a resume and a list of strengths. You're gonna wanna give them your overall GPA, your science GPA, any awards that you've received, like if you're on the Dean's List or if you have like a academic scholarship or something like that. I also recommend expecting to need to help them with their letter upload process. So unfortunately, because I applied DO and MD, I had to do this for two separate applications and I when I had to upload, there were very specific formatting and uploading instructions that my professors either didn't read closely enough or didn't understand, and so I had to help them with that. And that's another reason why you want to get your letters of recommendation in as early as possible because they could potentially have some trouble getting them in. Another thing that I didn't personally use was a committee letter. I didn't really establish a relationship with my pre-med committee, but if you don't do a committee letter, you can just do letters from your professors. You do two science professors and one non-science professor, and that substitutes as a committee letter. The next thing I want to touch on is how to play to your strengths. So what I mean by that is what makes you unique and how does it relate to your medical journey. So I kind of touched on this a little bit in the volunteering when I talked about how um, I really enjoy art and I was a sick kid so enrichment programs for sick kids really worked for me. In general, you want to relate the things that you enjoy to your desire to work in medicine. So another example is that um, I am half Filipino and I visited the Philippines several times and there's a lot of poverty and a lot of trouble getting health care in the Philippines. I also live in an underserved area and so what I saw in the Philippines was almost reflected in my experience here and seeing so many people without health care made me really want to pursue medicine and give back to a community similar to mine, an underserved community. Another aspect of my application that I talked about was my previous work experience in physical therapy. I worked as a physical therapy tech and that was one of the reasons that I really wanted to apply DO because OMM was really attractive to me as someone who A, wants to work in an underserved area and so OMM is just an additional tool that I can use and B, had physical therapy experience and had experience with physical healing of the body. So another aspect of my application that was a little bit unique. I also talked about how I was in an acapella group in college and how acapella requires you to use teamwork. Uh, it's vocal teamwork. I don't know. <laughs> Finally, I have some like last minute random tips for applications. The first thing is to apply as early as possible. Have your personal statement pre-written. Try to go online and look for secondary application typical topics and have just some ideas jotted down for those. You're gonna wanna have all this done as early as possible because admissions are rolling, which means if you apply too late and they've already filled their spots, you might not get in just because they don't have room. And this is super, super important. And I know it's so annoying. You don't wanna think about having to apply the summer before the application process even starts, but it's super important and you just have to get it done. I would recommend going to like a library or something where you just bring your laptop and try not to get distracted and just jot down as many ideas as you can and then build your essays from there. So I am not straight out of undergrad. I graduated in May of 2018 and I ended up taking a gap year before I was accepted and I'm accepted for fall of 2019. So another resource that I recommend is um, Med School Coach, which is basically like an advisor for how to get into medical school 
for, I mean, you can use them in undergrad if you want to, but I didn't really establish a good relationship with my pre-med advisor. I didn't like the things he was telling me. Um, in retrospect, he was prob he was obviously trying to help me, but he kept telling me that I should take a fifth year and do a program that at the time I really couldn't afford. So I ended up speaking with someone at med school coach during the spring of this year to find out what I should do if I don't get in this year. And obviously I did, but the information that he gave me was extremely, extremely helpful for my interview and for any med school application process. So speaking of the gap year, these are the things that I did during my gap year. So the biggest thing is that I had a full-time job scribing. And I think scribing is a really popular experience choice for people who are pre-med. Um, because as a scribe, you get to be in the room with the doctor. If you work as an MA, that's not always the case. It kind of depends on what practice you go to. Um, but as a scribe, you're always going to be in the room observing the doctor's interactions with the patients. So that's a really popular one and one that I think is super useful, especially since I scribed with Scribe America. So I already received training on how to write a soap note, which is one of the most important things that you learn in medical school. Um, proper documentation is super important. So that was a really great opportunity. And then obviously I was also volunteering and I retook some courses online. Um, towards the end of my work period, I scaled back to slightly less than full-time employment and I took a course online that I didn't do very well in in undergrad to prove to myself that I could do better and also to improve the GPA. So I retook that course online and I was also working on a research project with one of my friends from undergrad. We were doing a meta-analysis project. Another important note is that I got into a school that I applied to during a previous cycle. So I think that's really important for my particular application because I was able to show them hey, look at all these things that I've done since I applied last time, I've improved and I would love to go to your school. I applied here last year and I'm applying again. Um, that commitment I think is very important. There are other details that I just want to touch on is that I was a TA for several semesters. I TA'd for psychology courses and I TA'd for anatomy and physiology. And the last little tidbit of information that I have is that you should make friends with the other pre-med students. So at my school, there was a seven year med program. So you did three years of undergrad and then you didn't need to take the MCAT and you were automatically accepted to a neighboring medical school. So I was not part of this program, but I did end up making friends with the people who were in the program because we had a lot of the same courses throughout the three years. Basically the way my courses worked were that we all took the same courses for the first three years and then my last year was a lot of elective work. So um, I ended up making friends with a lot of them towards the end of my sophomore year and my grades really skyrocketed my third and fourth year. I did really well and part of that I attribute to the fact that I was around people who were also trying to do really well because they have a grade cut off. If they don't do well enough, they'll be kicked out of the program and so having other people to study with even if we weren't like best friends and we didn't hang out all the time we did try to have like dedicated study sessions before exams having a lot of people who kind of encourage you to do well and encourage you to study with them is really nice the last thing that i want to say and it was told to me by someone else who had a untraditional journey to medical school as well even though it may be discouraging to be waitlisted or flat out rejected from schools you really you only have to get into one school and it only has to work once so there were times when i wanted to quit and that i was tired and i didn't know if if i can't take this application process is this really for me keep pushing and you'll get that one acceptance and then you're good yeah don't give up basically <laughs> i don't really know how to end this okay
If you have any questions or more comments, would like more specific details, or would like other videos on my journey through medicine and to medicine, let me know in the comments or DM me or I don't know how direct message works on YouTube. <laughs> All right, bye.